everyone in the audience to take a moment to think of something that you've always wanted to see being executed in Lebanon. Maybe it's something that you complained about one day or something that you pointed out while walking down the streets. And then I want you to take another moment to think of something that you've always wanted to see done in your city, something that maybe you could do on your own or with a team, something to really change people's lives in your community. How do you bring the two together? Where's the link? I'm going to take you to, through a crea creative process um, that every person should go through when wanting to potentially bring change to their community and to people's lives. It's a simple process that consists of three mindsets or three steps that I feel everyone goes through at different intervals in their lives, but when sewn together, can create something extraordinary that you probably never even knew you could do. A year ago, I started a group on Facebook called Strictly Designers. It was a forum for us LEU graduates to keep in touch, to share daily inspirations and ideas, and to even keep up to date with job opportunities and events. One of the inspirations that was shared on this group was this photograph. This art piece called Scala was executed by German artist Horst Glasker. I call it an art piece because that's what it is. It may not be one that you walk in and contemplate in a gallery, but it's one that intervenes on its public space and its community, and it gives its people something to love their city more for. Who said anyway that art had to be in a gallery, that it had to be on a canvas or in a frame? If you're feeling any sort of emotion or motivation when you look at this photograph, then you've hit the first part of the process, or the first mindset. And it's what we all felt as well when we, we saw it. And that first mindset is inspiration. I remember we all sort of went crazy over this, saying things like, we wish we could do something like this in Beirut. Imagine somebody did something like this in Beirut. This was actually the first conversation we had when we shared the photograph on the group. You know, asking questions like, are we allowed to do that? What locations could we do this in? Let's create a movement. Everybody always wants to create a movement. <laughs> so anyone, anyone who's, you know, I mean, who's looking to push themselves into such an initiative just needs a push or a spark to get their idea going. And the push that we needed, that we, that, that we used for us, was just one question. And that question was, why can't we? Why can't we do something like this in Beirut? What's stopping us or stopping any of you from executing something right now in your community that could potentially change people's lives? I realize we're all really good at complaining about things that we want in Beirut, but why, why, are we wishing, why are we waiting for somebody else to do it? Why not you? If you're posing these questions to yourselves and coming up with excuses for answers, then you've hit the second part of the process. It's the second mindset. It's the one that bridges the gap between any strong concept you have or any inspiration like the one we just saw and executing it into a reality. And that mindset, the one that pushes you to get up to go, is taking action. It's the determination, not the ability, because we're all able to take action. But it's that actual will to get up and push something so forward that it potentially changes people's lives. Any person who has the passion for a particular initiative has to steer that passion and that imagination and throw it out there. Have the courage and even have the foolishness to believe in something so strongly that you just have to see it being done. And if you're as fortunate as we are, you'll have a beautiful group of people standing by your side who share in that passion and in that vision and will so selflessly throw it out there with you. For us, it was just that wonderful foolishness that got us out of bed at 6 in the morning. They got brushes in our hands and paint on the streets without knowing whatsoever what we were doing or what the final outcome would be or how people would react. We took a chance on ourselves and on others and the results were incredible. You'll never know how people are going to react. It's always the case. Lebanese people can be critics, yes, and sometimes they can't see past the lengths of social norms. But at the same time, our walls are exploding with street art and graffiti, many that have become national slogans that we've grown to love. And there are live bands across Lebanon and some across the world that started off as univers university students just like some of you who were playing guitar on campus, missing pixels included. <laughs> and thanks to, thanks to Wasim Milki's Beirut Wonder Forest and his vision of a greener Lebanon, we now have trees growing from our roofs. The point is, any form of expression that you feel is appropriate for you, do it. Go through with it. Once you've hit that note, then you've hit the final part of the process. 
It's the part where you see your dream and your vision come, come to life and unfold before your eyes. And that part is execution. There is no better feeling than seeing your dream and your vision and what you've worked so hard for come to life and having people who, share, who you thought would never share in that vision or would never accept it actually share in the triumph of it. I remember when we first started these initiatives, we had people coming out on their balconies, people coming down on the streets, giving us water and juice, thanking us for taking initiative in a community that, have gone, that has gone untouched for years. Even in our most recent initiative, a woman, older woman came down from her house and she started passing around our heads with bakhud and giving us blessings. <laughs> It's an incredible feeling, and to affect someone's li life on that level is huge. People take these kinds of things for granted. For example, this being my personal favorite, I remember that, you know, we put so much time and effort into this project. People look at it and they think, okay, so it's 30-something steps. How much time is it really going to take? How much effort? They're throwing paint on some stairs and, you know, they're designing, they're designers. But this precise project was actually the one that took us the longest. And it was one of our smaller initiatives, and it took us eight hours to execute. We were jumping up and down between the stairs into the trees and the you know, sand and everything, with people walking up and down asking us questions and us having to answer them and tell them about what we were doing. They weren't so happy about walking all the way around to get to the other side, but you know, it's all for the bigger picture. Um, people in the beginning said, how is it really going to affect people's lives? But from stairs to streets to walls that lead to buildings, you have houses. And not just houses, you have homes. And in those homes, you have people just like you and I, who are families and neighbors. And if we can affect just one person's mood when they step outside their door onto some beautifully colored stairs, and if we can have them spread that energy onto others, then we can sleep sound at night, and we can wake up again at 6 in the morning. <laughs> and we can wake up again at 6 in the morning and continue spreading color throughout the streets of Beirut. You'll come to realize that people, they, they don't oppose something that you set out to do in their city. They just want to see that something is being done. They just want to see that somebody cares, because having someone care for you automatically makes, you, it makes them care for you back. Sorry. Remember one thing though, that you work in parallel with the people who don't see your vision just as much as those who do. They matter just as much if not more because in order to truly affect change, you aim to move the unmoved and to inspire the uninspired and the skeptics. The thing is that people are always going to try to tell you that you can't do something. And the strategy is not to try to convince them that you can, it's to show them. It's to give them something that they love so much that what you can and can't do isn't even up for question anymore. So take this final advice. If you don't like the answers, change the question. And if you don't like the rules, which fortunately Beirut doesn't have many to go by, <laughs> then just change your, your game plan to something not that people will be repulsed by or that will cause a pro protest but to something that will give their city some, like, to something that will give them a reason to love their city more for. Listen to other people's needs as much as your own, because we've all lived in a to each his own mentality, and it's gotten us nowhere in the positive respect whatsoever. And be kind to others, and to what they want. We've always questioned and asked everyone who we go and paint in their community, ask their opinion, and take in their, their you know, vision into consideration. In order to, but also, in order to take, to take the initiative to actually bring about change, you have to take these steps. Foolishly, maybe even blindly at first, to truly bring about, about change. Because nothing moves if you don't. And it could all start with something as simple as a paintbrush. Thank you. Woo!